What's the word? Bibliosophie. Hello, hello. I'm Sophie. Today I bring you a reading vlog with a theme. It is probably going to be partially a travel vlog because I am currently in California. Uh, I'm going to be singing a Philip Glass opera in San Francisco in two weeks. And I've already been here actually for a week, by the way, full disclosure. Uh, but it's also a themed vlog in terms of what I'm reading. I'm staying at my mother's house and I am picking some books from her copious shelves. Much like her daughter, she has a tremendous number of books and uh, a lot of them are very interesting to me. So I've kind of picked out some things uh, that I'd like to maybe read in the next two weeks. Here are some contenders. Two that are of a similar vein, some Italian, big chunky uh, Italian classics in verse are Orlando Furioso. Uh, this is a translation by David R. Slavitt um, that I've been wanting to, vaguely to read for kind of a while in a nebulous way. I don't honestly know if I will get to it. This, this feels like a book that I should read uh, and I don't know if I will. I know it'll be good and yet I don't know. So we'll see. This is, if you are an opera person, the basis for a good number of uh, opera libretto. Is a, yes, libretti, if you want to use the Italian uh, plural. And then another classic that's probably more familiar to you is Dante, yes, Dante's Inferno. I was, yeah. um, and this is a translation in verse by Robert Hollander and Jean Hollander. I haven't read the Inferno in quite a long time. I was a teen when I um, read the only other time I've read it. I am sort of on a tear about maybe rereading some books, so maybe this could be a reread for me. It has the Italian and the English translation, so possible. There are two probable contenders. Uh, my one and only novel novel, which is Possession by A.S. Byatt. This is a recommendation from my mother. There are other Byatts floating around. Um, this won the Booker Prize a number of years ago. Um, I've never read any of Byatt's books and I know that this one is a good one. What is it about? Um, an exhilarating novel of wit and romance, at once an intellectual mystery and a triumphant love story. This is a tale of a pair of young scholars researching the lives of two Victorian poets. Perfect. Sounds impeccable. Um, so I think I this is probably going to be the next book I read. And similarly, I think one that I will definitely want to prioritize getting to is, um, what's it called? The Wives uh, by Alexandra Popoff. This is, um, uh, kind of the lives of Russia's, the wives of Russia's great uh, into, um, writers, basically, um, novelists. So I am assuming Tolstoy, Dostoevsky, um, yes. Sofia Tolstoy was the first one present, uh, Vera Nabokov, um, Elena Bulgakov, etc etc uh i've been interested in this book uh since it came out this author also wrote a biography of sofia tolstoy uh which i also haven't read but i'm interested in so i think this would should be a very interesting book to me and then i have three kind of more um esoteric things that i'm probably not going to read in their entirety or definitely not going to read in their entirety uh, in this case but that I think I want to dip into uh, how to read a modern painting um, so this has a lot of big classic modern masterpieces and kind of texts on them I don't think I'm going to read this cover to cover but I'd like to um, look into this it looks like a very beautiful book uh, Mary Louise von Franz, uh, The Feminine in Fairy Tales, which seems like a truly fascinating uh, topic. I'm probably not going to read all of this, 
but I'd like to at least read a little bit of it. It's not that long, but you know, there's always something else on the horizon. And finally, drugs and narcotics in history. Very niche topic. Um, this is a series of essays on just that. This is an older book. I think this is published in the early or mid 90s, mid 90s. Um, so kind of as far as academic texts go, uh, it could be outdated, but at the same time, it's on the history of things, you know, presumably we're going to be hearing about uh, the opium poppy. Um, so I'm interested in reading at least some of the essays of this. And yeah, we'll see over the course of the next uh, two and a half weeks, basically, how far I get. Production fridge contains only the bare necessities. So we need about a minute and ten seconds. Okay, sure. Ready. Good morning. First of all, is this gigantic Kusama mug not kind of preposterous in size? I think so. Uh, I have started, I'm about a, not quite a fifth, let's say a sixth of the way through possession. So I'm going through it relatively slowly, more on why in a second. Uh, it's definitely a fast and compelling read. Uh, it's about, so far, mostly one uh, London-based scholar who is uh, researching a uh, poet, uh, a Victorian poet, and has found some kind of information uh, for, in a letter that has never been unearthed before and so kind of is going on a uh, deep scholarly archaeological uh, adventure uh, and has just met another scholar of another um, Victorian uh, poetess, writer, um, and presumably their paths are going to keep twining as the paths of the people that they're studying are twining. Uh, Bayet has constructed a very full world of real and uh, invented characters. She has invented the uh, figure, the kind of primary first poet figure um, of Ash, who is a sort of Robert Graves-like um, folkloric, mythological, uh, cosmic poet. Uh, who's well respected, um, and it she writes all of the um, all of the poems and works that he supposedly has written as well. So there's a lot of you know primary material that is in fact uh, invented itself, and then the other poet uh, that she the other Victorian poet that uh, these researchers are trying to figure out the life of is um, Christabel Lamott, and so she also has uh, a bunch of writing for her. So it's a lot of strands. Uh, it's a very, very rich world. I, um, I'm not completely compelled in some aspects because basically I don't love the two Victorian poets all that much and I I'm a little bit wary of even the contemporary or it takes place in 1986 the more contemporary uh, characters as well there's there are a few things that are standing in my way to a certain extent but uh, it's a great read nonetheless and a really just impressive weaving of things. I um, I find myself really 
yeah, kind of flummoxed a lot of the time. Um, so one of the reasons why I haven't been reading, I mean, I'm busy, I have other things to do, but also I've begun simultaneously uh, The Death of the Heart by Elizabeth Bowen. I'm about um, a quarter of the way through that. I've been listening to it on audio uh, because my loan came in. I had the idea of um, reading it through reading Vivian Gornick's Unfinished Business last month. Uh, and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's a not so much a comedy of manners as sort of a tragedy of manners. Uh, Portia is the illegitimate half-sister of a kind of bourgeois uh, London man, Thomas, uh, who's married to Anna, and at the death of Portia's mother, uh, she goes to live with them for a year, and she's sort of an innocent to the ways of um, London patrician society. Uh, she is, she feels like an outsider, she is an outsider in many ways, um, and she's kind of un... at the same time as she doesn't belong for kind of exterior factors, she also really doesn't belong for uh, a bunch of emotional internal factors because she hasn't internalized some of the codified rules of uh, British society as somebody who is born out of wedlock, who grew up um, abroad, kind of exiled as an illegitimate child. Uh, this takes place between World War I and World War II. It was written in the mid-30s, I think. Yes, yeah, something like this. It was... No, it was written maybe after World War II. I think it was written after World War II, excuse me. Um, but it takes place between the wars, so it's also about kind of the dissolution of the an old order of um, British society as well. Uh, it's definitely a big investigation of class and um, hypocrisy. Um, and so yeah, it's also beautifully written and I'm quite enjoying it. Last fun fact, I just found out today, this morning, that um, A.S. Byatt's maiden name is Drabble, and so, yes, she is the older sister of Margaret Drabble, so that is quite a prolific um, literary family. Yep, I need to read Margaret Drabble. I've never read any of her things either. From bed. I'm wearing my comfy gray bed sweater that I apparently wear in all bedtime uh, videos in this vlog. It wasn't such a long day, but I'm quite tired. So it goes. I started uh, this when in rehearsal when I wasn't singing. Uh, it is a series of essays on love relationships, uh, self in various um, kind of Western cultural uh, works and philosophies. Uh, the first essay is the one that I read today is relating to Freud, so it's kind of the steepest entry point for me. I have a thing against Freud, even though I actually really haven't read enough of his extensive bibliography to really merit that dislike. I think it's not a extremely intellectually sound of me to rebuff him as much as I do. But, well, you can consider me intellectually unsound. We're all imperfect creatures. Um, I don't know if I'll end up reading all of them. I like Kristeva, uh, who's a linguist, philosopher, cultural critic, feminist, so, you know, the sort of <laughs> things that I gravitate to. She's apparently also a novelist, which I wonder what her novels are like. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna pick those up, but I'm very curious.
Um, yeah, those are my somewhat scattered thoughts for this evening. Bye bye. I'm nearly done with the death of the heart it's very painful very funny the way that she describes the kind of manners and set in their ways the assumptions that people make are just very very comedic and then very very painful um, yeah it's been a great reading experience I'm also about halfway done through possession which is convoluted it is a rich world uh, and now I'm gonna go to rehearsal. My creepy hallway. Today's gonna be a very long day of rehearsal. It's our last day in the rehearsal space, uh, and we're running through the entire opera twice, I believe, but then also I have to stay a little longer to film a couple of scenes because uh, this is a multimedia sort of extravaganza and uh, I will appear in like my filmed face will appear also on the side of the stage uh, while I sing live. So in short, a long day. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, I'm about halfway through, or actually at this point a little over halfway through uh, possession. I think those are squirrels. Naturist, tell me. Um, I guess that means a nudist, doesn't it? Nature lovers, tell me. Uh, I am a little unfocused as of yet. Uh, halfway through, big, complicated, convoluted series of interweaving storylines. Uh, I mentioned that we're predominantly following two um, academics, two specialists in uh, Victorian poets in 1986, and it's sort of a contemporary uh, love story between, presumably, uh, between them. We haven't yet seen them develop into a love story, but there's definitely a will they, won't they between um, Roland and Maud, contemporary Victorian researchers. Um, but it's also a will-they-won't-they they, uh, love story in the past of the two poets that Maud and Roland are predominantly uh, focusing their research. Maud on Christabel Lamotte and Roland on Randolph? Ash? Is it Randolph? In any case male name Ash, uh, who are kind of these epic poets who may or may not have had some sort of rapport, at the very least a connection in some way, and we don't yet know kind of what kind of connection. Uh, it's really impressive because Bayet has essentially created this very, very rich world of primary documents, but she's inventing all of the primary documents as well, because she has invented the, um, the historical figures, and so she has written their poetry, their uh, short stories, their correspondences, uh, journal entries for various people around them, uh, but also, in the contemporary world, uh, the excerpts of research papers that uh, these academics and surrounding academics have been writing. So it's, it's a really, <clears throat> excuse me, impressive feat of, of metafiction. It's, it's a love story. The love story is the least interesting aspect to me, and it's essentially what dings the book for me personally because I'm not that interested in the plot. I'm, not, I'm neither interested in the poets um, in the 19th century nor super super much in uh, Maud and Roland now. I like the characters but 
I don't care whether or not they fall in love. Uh, however, the, the metafictional aspect, which I think is the, the strongest, most impressive aspect of the book, is really interesting. And the commentary on state of research, on methodology, on um, digging through the past, what gets to be published, who possesses. Sorry, you can't actually see the cover, I realize, because my notes to myself about various things that I want to do differently uh, while I sing um, are covering it. But it's called Possession for kind of a series of reasons, and I think the most compelling reasons are who possesses these documents, who possesses the the storytelling arc of these two historical figures um, because there is it's a mystery it's a mystery novel it's a uh, it's a tr treasure chest novel um, and in some ways it's kind of a race against the clock because who's going to scoop out the uh, the new research so that aspect I'm finding really really interesting and compelling I don't love reading the long passages, and I've been kind of skimming through the long passages of the writings of Ash and Lamott because mm, it's a sort of like uh, fairy and mytholo mythology laden uh, epic. Uh, Victoriana that, eh, you know, I don't, that it doesn't grab me. Uh, it's phenomenally created, but eh, I don't, I don't need like a 10 pager on Ragnarok, quite honestly. <laughs> Greetings from your early 90s bourgeois mom. It. I'm not going to get it, but I want it. This is the car we're doing all of this in, and it has no cup holders, and my mother is currently having a coffee. Cuckoo! absolute quintessence of oysterdom and clafoutis for dessert mm -hmm. okay so the question this morning is do I want to look like the cool oldest daughter in a 90s sitcom or do I want to look like a vampire um, I think this way yeah this is your bad monitor monitor I look funny in this. Why do I look funny? I don't know. I finished The Death of the Heart this morning. I had only the last chapter. Um, yeah, I really love that book. I think I need to read it again. I think I'm gonna buy it and read it again at some point. I'll be interested to see how my opinion of it changes depending on where I am in my own life. Uh, fittingly, I picked it up because I read Vivian Gornick's um, Unfinished Business, which is about rereading, and she mentions uh, that book. And I think I will definitely get different things from it, depending on where I am in my life. It feels 
currently so so kind of raw and real i said earlier that it is very painful and it kind of keeps getting more and more painful in a lot of ways um and in a way that i hadn't like in a visceral way i hadn't necessarily anticipated because i'm kind of projecting my own stuff onto it um it's so much about disillusionment and on a smaller character level uh portia is 16 and she's kind of learning about the the world of the lying lives of adults to uh borrow another book title but also kind of genteel pristine europe which of course is not pristine uh learning about the difficulties of modernism uh <clears throat> being disillusioned by the first world war so yeah i think it i should definitely it's a relatively short book actually and i think it's one that i should reread i think maybe i'll write something about it she says and then does she actually write about it let's see i'm also very very close to done with possession uh i had some various ideas about where the plot was going to go uh, and it has basically just followed exactly what I assumed would happen. Um, I don't know if it was projected extremely obviously or not, I think it makes sense. I'm not somebody who needs twists and turns to be shocking. Uh, I think it makes sense when twists are well plotted. It, so I definitely called a lot of the the current denouement of things uh but that i think is just kind of good making a good skeleton of a plot and i'm going to start probably right now on my break the wives again i don't know why i'm showing the book because i removed the book jacket i don't like the way it looks first of all but mostly i don't like running around with um, hardback book jackets because they get kind of flustered. And that's it. I'm going to do my tech run tonight. I think it'll be a late night. By the way, obviously the final choice was 90s vampire. This was also the more pajama-like option, which was an important factor, but I did go quite vampiric uh, on the shoes, which are pretty great, and I stole from my mother. This cover. <laughs> Opening night, I'm gonna finish putting on some makeup. Hi, I am not sure I can put on makeup and talk to you at the same time, but we're gonna try. I've made this fantastically uh, dangerous and complicated contraption on one of the towel racks in the corner of the bathroom. And I'm gonna put on some makeup and I'm gonna talk about some books and let's see. So, I did finish Possession and I really liked it. I definitely called all of the, almost all of the major plot elements. There is kind of a storm aspect to the end that I couldn't possibly have foreseen. I'm not really spoiling anything. This is a historical storm that happened in Britain and it also doesn't really change anything. It just, exists and is kind of a fitting um, plot aspect, but it isn't even a plot device. Um, so I definitely called all of the major plot movements and I don't mind that at all. I really liked A.S. Byatt and I definitely plan to read more of her stuff. I have other plans to read even uh, next one, which is I think called The Biographer's Tale, or maybe The Biographer's Story, I can't remember exactly. And it's kind of following along the similar themes of um, research and scholarship and metafictional uh, pursuit of how we read, how we 
how we tell stories, how we tell our own stories, how we retell other storytellers' stories, what we read into things, um, research, etc. So I, I love that aspect and I'm gonna continue to look into it. Um, otherwise, apart from possession, my gambit of reading my mother's books in this vlog has been basically a failure because I haven't finished anything else. But that is also kind of uh, just a pretext and it doesn't matter. Uh, namely, what I have not finished and that I sort of assumed I would uh, is The Wives. Uh, it's good, I recommend it. It is the lives of um, a bunch of interesting women who were the interesting wives of interesting men. I think I'm in a mood for fiction right now, and also, apart from that, I have read actually several of these stories pretty recently, because I read the biography, the long biography of Vera Nabokov a couple of months ago. Um, I read a lot of the aspects of the courtship of um, Dostoevsky and his wife uh, in the... I forgot what it's called. I have another book title in mind that is kind of blocking the real title, but the book I read a few months ago about the writing of Crime and Punishment. So I didn't really feel like I needed to um, read that right now. It wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me, but I think it is probably quite good nonetheless. Uh, and then the other things I wasn't really planning on reading cover to cover anyway. Uh, I've abandoned the Julia Kristeva, which I thought I could potentially read cover to cover, but it wasn't doing it for me. I like Kristeva. I like her brand of feminism slash philosophy slash critical analysis, but these essays felt just not what I wanted to read, honestly. Um, so, yeah. And I didn't read Dante etc. etc. No bother. Uh, I am almost done reading Passing by Nella Larson, which I've unsurprisingly really enjoyed. It's my first time reading it. I've been um, meaning to read it for a few years now. Um, it's had a lot of renewed interest, um, I think, as a result of Britt Bennett's The Vanishing Half that deals with similar themes and some uh, similar um, context of passing. Um, in short, it's the story of two black women uh, in the 20s who are both very light-skinned. Uh, they know each other from childhood and they kind of fall back into each other's lives. One of them, Claire, is married to a white man and passing as white, and then the other, um, Irene, or Reen, is not. She is living in New York uh, as a black woman married to a black man, and um, it's the story of how they re-encounter one another and how their lives intersect in um, really difficult ways, uh, sometimes pleasurable and sometimes really difficult ways for them. It's in third person, but it's really from um, Irene's point of view. And yeah, it's really short uh, and packs quite a punch of storytelling. Uh, I still have just a little, like, the last uh, two very, very short sections of it left. Uh, I'm actually spoiled on the ending, uh, so I can tell you that uh, some, some stuff goes down, uh, but I will not tell you what. Uh, so, of course, it explores themes of race and racial identity, 
Um, what I didn't realize until reading it is just how much it explores also class, which makes sense, of course. Um, both women are, you know, comfortable middle, upper middle class, um, but of course two different middle classes, one white, one black. Um, propriety and uh, different dynamics of status, uh, sexuality, both in terms of hetero versus homosexuality, but just also female sexuality in general. Um, yeah. I'm not saying anything surprising by saying that it's good and worth reading, but it is good and worth reading, and I'm glad I finally got to it. I'd like to read also Nella Larson's um, other quite famous short novel, Quicksand, uh, that I have as part of the same uh, ebook collection with uh, passing. Um, so ideally that will be in the near future, near-ish future. She's got eyes. All right, I am going to wrap her up today. Uh, going to go into my third performance tonight, and then we close the opera tomorrow afternoon, and then I leave again. This has been quite a long vlog. It's the longest period of time I've ever covered because you got, I guess, two full weeks? It feels much longer than two weeks. There hasn't been that much reading being done because I've been busy, um, but I really liked the three classics that I finished in full. Um, you got some tastes, me tasting various books and ultimately not reading them, and finishing three. So it feels complete and quite a lot of behind-the-scenes footage. So till the next one. Ciao!